morning in the house of the Lord. And I uh, appreciate you being here. I'm sure you had a great Sunday school lesson. I wish I could have been able to be over there. But I appreciate everybody coming out for Sunday school. And uh, that's an awesome ministry. And we are looking for somebody to teach our teenagers, the teenage class. So if you feel like that's your gift and the Lord is calling you to teach, come see me about it. We'll pray about it and see if you're the one God's raising up to teach our uh, teens. And that's a very that's a very crucial age. And uh, so we'll talk about that. Man. And uh, I just uh, I want us to uh, all stand this morning. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit into the service, and we're going to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Pentecost Sunday. Aren't you thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost? Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. And we're a Pentecostal group of people. Yes. And we believe in the true power of Pentecost. Yes. There's a lot of faults going around in the world. As a matter of fact, most of what you see is false. Uh, people are teaching people to speak in tongues and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. We're mainline Pentecostals. And we believe it just like it happened in the book of Acts, chapter 2, 1 through 4. And if that happens to you, then it'll be a great reality. Anything else is of the flesh and not of God. But we want the real move of God. And I tell everybody, it doesn't matter what denomination you're in, just seek the Lord. Seek to get close to God. And if that experience happens to you, it'll be wonderful. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning in Jesus' name, and we thank you and praise you for being Almighty God. We pray, Lord, that you would move and have your preeminence, to have your will and way in this service this morning. Look inside of each and every heart and life, and God, I pray that you would meet that need that's inside the heart of each and every individual. We're not here, Lord, for a show. We're not here to uh, put on any kind of uh, play or show, but we're here, God, to receive from you. Re-energize us. Recharge our batteries, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Heal our sick bodies, Lord. Provide for us financially. I pray, Lord, that every good and perfect gift would be released in the heavens this morning. And that they would show up in a tangible way in the heart and lives of your people. And if there's anybody here this morning that is not saved, may this be the day of salvation for them. And Lord, we're going to worship you in spirit and truth because we love you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise God. Praise the sound of I had all the words lined up. We spent quite a bit of time, and uh, somehow or another, something got uh, messed up. We've been working on it all during Sunday school. So, uh, Sister Mike sent the words, everything she did was right. I just, we couldn't get it to work this morning. So, we'll get it working, and next Sunday it'll, it'll be up there. But uh, apologize for that mistake. Everyone had a black book. Has everyone got a black book? Turn to page 75. Bob, CD. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Hallelujah. We want to praise you today. Praise your name, Jesus. Blood of the 
Sister Shirley is going to do our special for us today. Y'all pray for her as she sings. Shirley Fletcher is 83. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and, and we, we, if I live to get to October, I want everybody to come to my home. <laughs> because I, I, I celebrate a birthday now every year since I turned 80. And I think that was one I never had celebrated before, you know, like that. But uh, I said, as long as I'm going to celebrate my birthday, and I thank God that we have this church to come to you. And I, I thank God for Brother Nick. I would have that. There are blessings to all of us. And all of you are a blessing to me. I love it Because he lives, and I know he does. Because he lives within me. That's a song today. Because he lives. 
church with uh, young people and little babies. And uh, Miss Donna's heading up our nursery and she's prepared. If anybody needs to be taken care of in our nursery. And I appreciate everybody that's working for the Lord. The Bible tells us, and we'll see a little bit about that this morning, our labor for the Lord is not in vain. If you're laboring for Mitch, it's in vain. If you're laboring for somebody else, it's in vain. But if you're doing it for the Lord, it's not in vain. And that's the blessed thing about it. What I'm doing, I'm doing for the Lord. Nobody can stop me. No devil, no person, no comment, nothing. It's going to stop me from doing God's will because I'm doing it for the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I am so thankful for Pentecost. I'm not going to preach on that this morning. Uh, I obey the Lord. I don't care what holiday it is. I just obey the Lord. So if you come to church on a holiday looking for something, you might get something different. Amen. I don't even hardly keep track of holidays. I just preach what God lays on my heart. Amen. I love Pentecost. I could preach an hour right now at the drop of a hat. I'm thankful that I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I received it the real way. Seeking the Lord. And God baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And I began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave the utterance. And it changed my life. Just as much as I changed when I got saved, I changed just as much when God baptized me in the Holy Ghost. It gives you boldness. It's just an extra power. The Bible uses the word dunamis. It means miraculous power. It's TNT from heaven. It's dynamite. And I challenge you to seek the fullness of the power of God. He said, be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. We've got people in our church getting drunk with wine and everything else. But what they need to get drunk on is the Holy Ghost. Amen. God said it. He commands us to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. He wants us full and overflowing. Yes. Praise the Lord. Lord, I pray this morning to anoint me to preach your word yes. and your people to receive with gladness the word of God that's able to save their soul. Lord, you see the needs. And I pray that you meet the needs this morning by your power and by your might. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to know God wants to meet every need this morning. I don't care if it's financial need or if it's uh, some other kind of need. God wants to meet the need this morning. Yes. When we pray and seek the Lord as a corporate body, God can release the answer to prayer and it will show up in your life in a tangible way. I mean in a way that you can touch it. You can feel it. It can be physical. It can be a spiritual need. It can be a financial need. But God can release it this morning. I'm believing him to do that. Yes. Praise the Lord. In your Bibles this morning, 1 Corinthians 15, 
verses 51 through 58. This is what's been on my heart all week. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. The word of God says, Behold, I show you a mystery. God here is showing us a mystery. There are many things in the word of God and from heaven that is a mystery to us that we don't understand. Here God is revealing one of those mysteries. There's some things I don't understand, like why do the righteous suffer? Why do the righteous suffer? And somebody that's mean as the devil seems like they never have a problem. One day I might ask God that. Why doesn't God heal everyone? Why doesn't God heal everybody? One person can be healed of cancer and another person die. Why is it that a little baby that's never done anything wrong is over there in that hospital, all the hair's falling out and they're eat up with cancer? And they may die. I've seen situations where we prayed and fasted and sought God. And I just felt like, Lord, surely that's not your will to let that person pass away and that person pass away. Leaving a child with not a mother or a father. Why do evil people prosper? Why do the wicked prosper? The only way we can know the mysteries of God is if we get alone with God and seek the Lord. Many people will never know the mysteries of God because the only word they hear is on Sunday morning from a preacher and most preachers don't preach it anymore. Amen. The full word of God. But if you want to know the mysteries of God, it will be found in the word and it will be found on your knees in prayer as you seek the Lord with all of your heart, and God will give you the answer to what you're praying for. He'll reveal it to you. There's been times I've been in situations, I said, Lord, if it goes on one more day, I'm not going to make it. And I get along with the Lord, and I begin to pray, and I begin to seek the Lord, and the Holy Ghost comes down, and he makes himself real to me, and makes the Word of God open up to me like the rhema Word of God. And God gives me a word on it and reveals to me the mystery of his will. And maybe the circumstances don't change, but I change because I got a clear word on it. And if you get a clear word on it, it doesn't matter what the devil has to say. You know what God said. It doesn't matter even what people say. You know the Lord told you the why about it. Right. Amen. Sometimes Amen. situations last so long and we're not on God's timetable. And we don't understand why God didn't move in our time. But I want you to know God can reveal to you and give you a word if you'll seek him. He said, if you'll seek me, I can be found. He's like my little granddaughter. The number one thing she likes to do is play hide and go see. And, and she hides in the same place. And she's sticking her head up. And the fun part isn't me finding her. The fun part is when I begin to chase her through the house. She's not hiding from me. She wants me to catch her and chase her. And that's the way it is with the Lord. He's not hiding from you uh, because he doesn't want you to find him. He wants you to search after him. And, and when you search with all your heart, the Bible says you will find him. He can't be found. I'm glad when the preachers are gone and nobody's around me and all hell is coming against me. I can bow my the bedroom and, and I can say God I need to hear from heaven and we can hear from heaven he can reveal unto us the mystery of his will Lord I don't understand why I'm going through this will you show me help me sometimes he says trust me but when he gives me a clear word on it everything's going to be okay here the Lord said behold I show you a mystery and then he says that we shall not all sleep. 
That word there doesn't mean go to sleep, like literally go to sleep. He's talking about dying. We shall not all die. There may be some people here this morning that will never die. Amen. We shall never die. The Christians that are alive when Jesus returns will not die. The Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. And then those that are alive and remain shall be called up together in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. There's going to be people that do not die, but gravitation loses its hold, and, and they receive a glorified body, and they're raptured off of this earth. The Bible says those that see the burning of the fig tree or the rebuilding of Jerusalem as a nation will not pass away until the coming of the Lord. We are that generation that seen the seen the reestablishing of Jerusalem. The Bible says, I'm revealing to you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. We're going to be changed. I started thinking about this, and I got a blessing. Those people who are alive shall go through a change in their body. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the way we are right now will be changed. Some people have said Jesus died when he was 33, so we're going to have bodies that are 33 years old. But really, the resurrected body of Jesus was brand new. That's right. We're not going to have a 33-year-old body. We're going to have a brand new body. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the gout's going to be gone. The soreness in my joints are going to be gone. The high blood pressure is going to be gone without medication. The high cholesterol, the heart problem, it's all going to be gone in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. All the gray hair is going to be gone. I want you to know what is going to be a wonderful day. Oh, the doctors sometimes can't do anything about it, but God, in, the minute, in a moment, in the batting of an eye, this body's going to be changed. Praise the Lord. It said in verse 52, in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. The rapture of the church is going to happen in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. Listen, friend, you're not going to have time to get ready, do you? Now's the time to get ready. Now's the time to seek God. Young people, now's the time to make sure your heart's right with God. Because the Lord's coming in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. As quickly as you back your eyes, the Lord's coming. We won't have no time to get ready then. As it was in the days of Noah when the door was shut. That's it. Now's the time to get right with God. I'll tell you, I don't want to go out with a whipper. I don't want to go dragging in. I want to go in doing everything God's called me to do. I want to be closer to God than I've ever been. I want to have the fire burning. I want to be doing the Lord's will. He could come today. That's the next thing on God's agenda. He's coming. The Bible said at the last trump, I could preach a long time there. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Praise the Lord. He's coming with a, with a trumpet blast. People get on Pentecostals for getting loud. Let me tell you, God's loud. Everything that happens, he, he reveals it with a noise. I thought about the, the rustling of the mulberry bushes, the presence of God and I thought about on the day of Pentecost, it wasn't silent. He came with the sound of a rushing mighty wind. He came with a sound. And the Bible says when he returns, he's coming with a trumpet blast. He's going to be playing the trumpet. The, the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. And, and the Lord's going to descend from heaven with a shout. And, and the Bible says, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. In scripture, God said, in the house of the Lord, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph, and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Let me tell you something this body is corruptible. This corruption, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and we're mortal. If you haven't realized it or not, you're flesh, and that flesh cries out for its way, it wants to be pleased. I said, Twyla, give me some lotion this morning. I looked and saw little wrinkles and cracks on my hand. And the older I get, uh, Brother Lucas, the more it gets cracked and wrinkled. And my chin just, just, it, it, it's just corruptible. His body's corrupting. And some of the faith preachers with them two-inch thick bifocals talk about how, oh, it, uh, you're going to be healthy, wealthy, and prosper. But I see their hair turning gray and they get wrinkles on their skin and their body's corruptible and it's mortal just like me. And if we live long enough, we'll see that. Young people think they'll never grow old. Yes, you will. I remember when I was sitting right where they're at. It seems like yesterday. And I was talking about the old folks. And now I'm up here and I am old folks. I'm a senior citizen. And it's corrupted. God said it must. Listen to this. The Lord blessed me this week with this. Before we can go to heaven, our bodies must be changed. Right now, our spirit is right. The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But if we're going to be in the fullness of God's glory, we've got to have another body. You know, in the presence of God, it can get so strong. The Bible said the priest couldn't stand to preach the word of God in the temple, in the tabernacle. And in the garden, when those soldiers came to get Jesus, they fell back like dead men. I'm talking about the presence of God. The times that I've been in the presence of God, I don't lift up my shoulders and put my finger under my lapel. I fall on my face. Yes, amen. And there's a holy reverence yes, that I'm in the presence of God. Amen. God. And that's one reason why these bodies must be changed is because in a split second, we're going to be in the full presence of God. Amen. Can you imagine that? Oh, hallelujah, we're going to be in his glory. We're going to be there in the fullness of God's glory. And that's why our bodies have to be changed. You remember Isaiah in the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 5, he was crying out, Woe is this man, woe is that man. But in Isaiah chapter 6, when he saw the Lord and his train filled the temple, he fell like a dead man and said, Woe is me. Talking about the presence of God. And we pray, Lord, I want to I wanna feel your presence. But I have been there before where I quit praying that and I said, Lord, if you give me any more, I feel like I'm gonna die. I see a blue haze across the the dormitory there at Bible College when them preachers were praying all night long, and and I was afraid to look up in the presence of God. And I want you to know you can, you can get close to God and you can feel his presence. Verse 54. So when the corruptible shall have put on in, incorruption and the mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. When this change happens, we'll finally be able to see the full manifestation of the victory of God. When our bodies are changed and, and we're become and we're in a glorified body and we're in the full glory of God, then we'll truly understand what it's like to see the full manifestation of the power of God and the glory and the victory of God. Sister Lynn begins to play softly. 
You know, I've been by many gravesides at funerals. And there's a huge difference in the funeral of somebody that's lost and doesn't know the Lord and somebody that does know the Lord. You know why the next verse, verse 55 says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The grave doesn't have any hold on me as a child of God, and it doesn't have any hold on you. Oh, death, where is your sting? The stinger's been taken out of death. And the victory's been taken out of the grave. And somebody say, praise the Lord. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I don't fear death. I've been there where I didn't know if I was going to live or die. My mom was just there a few weeks back. And she had the same thing. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to stay. Don't revive me if I go on. Don't try to bring me back. I'm ready to go. And I'm telling you, that's how I feel. I don't fear death. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm going to eat country ham biscuits about every morning. I'm going to eat milk gravy and biscuits. I'm going to eat fried chicken. I ain't afraid to die, and I'm not going to live like a rabbit while I'm here. For old death, where is your sting? Old grave, where is your victory? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The sting of death is sin. <laughs> I'm telling you, somebody ought to be shouting. Because we commit sin. We do things wrong. But thanks be unto God, through Jesus Christ, my sin can be taken away as far as the east is from the west. Praise the name of the Lord. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Aren't you glad you're not living under law? You better be. Or you'd be under arrest. You'd be under arrest. But Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. I said Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. It's fulfilled in his death, burial, and resurrection. Things been taken out of death and the victory's been taken out of the grave. But thanks be unto God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say? Jesus has given you the victory. Well, I thought it came because I was good all last week. No. You have the victory because Jesus gave it to you. He gave you the victory. Admit doesn't mean you live like the devil. We strive for perfection. But God gave us the victory through Jesus Christ. When he hung on the cross and died and rose again, he spoiled principalities and powers and put them to an open shame. He totally defeated the devil. He totally annihilated him. That's why we don't have to fear demon spirits. Somebody said a demon came into my house and rebuked it in Jesus' name. God's given you authority over the devil. He's given you the victory. And then finally this morning, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Listen to me. God says be steadfast. Keep on keeping on. Don't stop. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on doing God's will. It's going to get worse and worse. You've got to have a steadfast made up mind that you're going all the way with God. It says be unmovable. Grandma used to sing that song like a tree planted by the river. I shall not be moved. You've got to have a militant spirit and have a made-up mind. I'll tell you, the devil will try to move you, especially when you get in the place God wants you. And then he says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You say, what should I be doing for the Lord? You should be doing an abounding work. 
abounding work. Abounding. Always abounding. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, always abounding. Always abounding. In what? In the work of the Lord. Let me tell you, nothing is more important than the work of the Lord. If you haven't listened so far, listen now. Nothing is more important than the work of the Lord. I could preach a long time right there, but let me tell you something. You better make time for the work of the Lord. God said, always abounding in the work of the Lord. What's God called you to do? What talent has God given you that you're not using? What vision is it that God has showed you when you pray? God said, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You know, I feel peace when I'm doing God's will. I can't say it enough. The Holy Spirit has to drive that home. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. God's revealing a mystery. He says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Not in, not in Mitch. You don't do it for Mitch. You don't even do it for the church. You're doing it for the Lord. And that's why some people are busy as bees. They're doing it for the Lord. That's why they're here night and day, rain, sun, snow, sleep, hell. They're abounding in the work of the Lord. Somebody told me the other day, I just enjoyed doing something for the Lord. For your labor's not in vain in the Lord. Listen, I don't know how it's all going to work out when we get to heaven, but I do know this, we're going to stand before God and give an account for our labor. We're going to give an account for our works. You don't get to heaven by works, but there are going to be rewards given out in heaven. And the Bible says some of your works will be burned up like wood, hay, and stubble. You know why? Because you didn't do it for God. You were doing it for yourself. You were doing it for mama, for daddy. You were doing it for the pastor or for the deacon board or whatever. And when you present it to God, shh, you're just going to burn up. But there's going to be others. You may not even know they were working. They were doing it so silently. Nobody knew. And they're going to present it to the Lord and they're going to receive a reward. I don't know how all the rewards are going to be given out exactly or what's done with the rewards we get. But I do know we're going to get rewards for our labor. And we can present it to the Lord or I don't know what other areas there'll be for, that we can use those rewards. But you better bet every one of us will be there. And we're going to see uh, the works judged. We're going to be in heaven. I'll tell you, I don't want to get to heaven and have all my works burned up. So I check myself constantly. Why am I doing this? Why am I getting up when all everything in my body says is lay down, you're tired? Are you doing it because you're worried about what somebody's going to think? Or do you really love me, Mitch, and you're doing it because I called you to do it? And I look back and I can say there have been times I did it because I thought if I didn't do that, sister so-and-so was going to jump all over me. And so I did it for her. But most of the time I can truthfully say I get up and fight the pains and the aches of my body and the times when I could lay on the sofa and drink Pepsi Cola, eat popcorn, and watch cartoons. And I say, I can't do it because God's called me to do something else. I'd rather be doing God's will. Amen. Amen. Church, keep on keeping on. You're not doing it for me, you're doing it for the Lord. Everybody in this church, I'm looking at people that have talent and ability. Are you using it for God? You say, I don't have time. Yes, you do. You make time for what you want to make time for. 
and you can get mad at me if you want to. You make time for what you want to make time for. Amen. I'm going to make time for the Lord. Amen. And if you'll make time for the Lord to do God's will, you, you talk about having joy and peace, you'll have it. And let me tell you something, if everybody will get in their spot in the wall, like in the day of Nehemiah, we'll see God rebuild the wall here in at Beacon of Grace. Yes. Amen. Don't let the devil get you out of your spot in the wall. Yes. Labor where God has called you to labor. Yes. Heavenly Father, I praise you this morning. Yes. For your precious word is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our pathway. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll move in this altar service and that you'll meet every need in this sanctuary. I rebuke the spirit of the enemy that's going across this land, trying to rob the church of having church. And they come to church, but they don't have church. Because the devil's caused them to cower behind a mask. The Holy Spirit, I pray, go beyond the mask and the outward facade of religion. And meet every financial need, meet every physical need, meet every spiritual need. This morning, in Jesus' name. Mighty God, do it this morning, I pray. Everyone standing this morning. I wonder if there's somebody here.